Okay, guys. Now let's understand synthesis of ether. All right. Precisely, I would be talking about synthesis of diethyl ether. All right. I started with ethanol in presence of sulfuric acid at 413 K. Now what happens is sulfuric acid provides proton. Now we know oxygen has two lone pairs in it so it attacks does a nucleophilic attack on proton and forms OH. This OH was already existing this OH is newborn that it has formed now, owing to which oxygen gets more than desired bond as a result of which we know oxygen can take up to two bonds but here there are three so oxygen gets positive charge all right now it has to satisfy this positive charge and there is yet another molecule of when we take ethanol that does not mean one molecule existing when we say ethanol that means there are millions of molecules of ethanol so what happens is another molecule of ethanol does nucleophilic attack on this carbon this oxygen which is there which is positively charged picks up the shared electron pair towards itself as a result of this it ends up into this so water stabilized HOH this H whereas here when ethanol does the nucleophilic attack on this carbon now this oxygen if you check out this oxygen which is attached here to this carbon which lost its OH to water now this O which is there gets positive charge why because again we see here having three bonds two bond already existing new bond formed so it has got to stabilize so what it does is it picks up its shared lone pair all right and on doing so it forms ether and liberates proton H plus now if you go to see this was H plus which was used up from sulfuric acid and this is H plus which has got regenerated from this alcohol all right so sulfuric acid acts as a catalyst why because it provides proton that proton that proton takes part in the reaction and is again regenerated all right so this cycle keeps on happening so this is one of the method by which ether can be synthesized so we took primary alcohol and we got ether we got symmetric ether all right why because both the groups are same okay now now this reaction occurred because we carried it at 413k now what if we go to 443k and same sulfuric acid let's understand what happens same proton proton from sulfuric acid same oxygen does the nucleophilic attack nucleophilic attack and forms just as it formed over here the intermediate unstable intermediate now here same thing is going to happen because oxygen has got to get stabilized because it has got O plus charge now while stabilization since the temperature is high it's not the other molecule of ethanol which comes in picture it is intramolecular reaction so what is that this bond shifts over here this bond shifts over here so as a result of this this forms water molecule whereas here we find double bond generated so if we carry out the same reaction at 443k we end up with an alkene and H plus regenerated again uh, this is catalyst sulfuric acid acting as a catalyst and at that temperature this keeps on happening as a result of which the alcohol gets converted to alkene keeps on converting to alkene all right 443k is detrimental temperature for ether all right so this reaction is very sensitive to 
temperature. All right. Let's understand the next methodology for synthesis of ether. Now this is Williamson synthesis. In case of Williamson synthesis, what we do is we take sodium. Now since I am talking in terms of diethyl ether, so we take sodium ethoxide and ethyl halide. All right. In dry condition, of obviously, or uh, dry ether, the reaction is done. Sodium ethoxide reacting with primary halide. Now, on doing so, straight away it forms diethyl ether. NaCl, so we can see over here, Cl being electronegative, pulls the electron bond pair towards itself and that does a nucleophilic attack on Na, forming NaX. Now, this O minus which is there does a nucleophilic attack on CH2 because since it has lost bond pairs, so this has become carb cation. So this does a nucleophilic attack on this carbon forming diethyl ether. Now, these, this entire process occurs via SN2 mechanism. All right. Okay. Now, as we saw in case of alcohol and sulfuric acid, how temperature played crucial part in formation of ether here also it's secondary if we try out this reaction with secondary halide then elimination reaction occurs and here also we end up with propene all right we end up with propene instead of ether so primary halide is acceptable but secondary halide is not acceptable if i take primary halide and secondary alcohol acceptable but if i take secondary halide and primary alcohol not acceptable for formation of ether all right so let's understand what happens in case of aryl halide aryl halide even if you take primary alkoxide sodium alkoxide no reaction occurs. So this process is not meant for Williamson synthesis. It's not meant for aryl halides. All right. Then again, if I take tertiary, so we saw, we saw secondary halide. We saw primary halide. We saw primary halide. Secondary halide. Secondary halide. No reaction in terms of ether in terms of synthesis of ether identically when we use tertiary halide and primary alkoxide we end up again with isobutene all right no ether and ethanol and sodium chloride so secondary tertiary williamson does not work for secondary and tertiary halide for synthesis of ether, we end up with alkene. All right. So this was the methodology. And as I explained you earlier, if you make a flow sheet and study, you would find you would be very comfortable in understanding differences in methodologies and keeping in mind. All right. So please do so. All right. See you soon.